Hey everyone, my name is Mehul and welcome back to another video in which I want to discuss about Next.js versus React 18. So if you have seen my last video, we discussed about what React 18 brings to the table. We got uh, quite a look into Dan's discussion, one of the discussions. In this, I want to address one of the things which I also got as a comment and I also was wondering myself that with React 18 bringing a lot of great server-side support. I won't say great in the sense because React already had server-side support, but advanced server-side support, right? With React bringing that, will there be an impact to Next.js and, you know, people just doing SSR using React 18? In this video, let's find out that. All right, so I'm gonna start off with Dan's article again in the announcement in the React 18 repo, upgrading to React 18 on the server. Now, this means obviously that React was supported on servers before React 18 as well, but because there's a new architecture, especially, you know, the method has been changed for rendering the HTML. It has not been changed. I mean, there's a new one. The old one is still available, but render to string has been replaced more or less in a new version with pipe to node writable. Right, and if you use this one, you get new features. And for most of you, I believe you might not even have heard about uh, pipe to node writable or render to string before. In React, because we most likely don't do server side rendering in raw React, right? Either you're using Next.js or any other framework or something to help you along the way. But let's let's anyway take a look at this documentation, this blog post. This article just links us to an example which looks like this. Now, this is a little bit of cheating because you will see that Dan actually mentions that this does not work the way it should work technically, but you can get a good idea on, you know, when I refresh this, you see we get immediately the page, then the comments load for a split second. If you could just observe, it does not come with the HTML, it loads for a split second, and then these comments appear, right? And if you go to this page source, you're gonna see if you line wrap this, you can actually find the bits of the HTML, right? This demo is artificially slowed down and things like these. So you can see the page is actually server-side rendered. The comments section is not server-side rendered. So you can see, I mean, it is, but it's not available immediately. It's not available immediately. You can see H2 and then we have nothing, right? We have a spinner. So this is how kind of the HTML would look like when once this technology is ready and is shipped to react. But that's how it looks at the moment. Now I want you to compare this to a typical react application. Let's say this one from code down and I can just, you know, I'm picking code down because I can go into depth of how this is working. I know how this is works, how this works on code down. So now pay attention to the subscription price right here, right? When I refresh the page, you're going to see, it stays at a dollar and you know dash dash for a split second and then it converts into a number and an INR. Refresh this again, happens for a split second, right? Kind of similar to this, how the comments work in React 18. You know, if you think about it, if I replace it with a loader, it would pretty much be the same thing. But what's happening in Next.js demo here is that this web page completely loads first, right? You could see we have a subscribe at the rate most likely, yep. See, somewhere down the here. We have subscribe at the rate, dollar, 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 dash, dash per month for full year. So what I'm doing is I am actually sending down the wire, this exact same HTML. Then there's a network call being made, right? So if I go to network, refresh this page, go to XHR, you're gonna see at code dam, we actually make this GraphQL network call, which sends us this get pro membership data right, which then sends us, hey, this person is from India, so, you know, the INR, the currency symbol, variant is monthly, and so on. But what is happening here is that I actually made a network call to backend.codedam.com, which is a separate domain from, back, you know, from Codedam. And this is how Next.js recommends, as well as works at the moment. However, with React 18, what's gonna happen is that if you do something like this, this HTML, or, you know, this thing, still is generated on the server, right? This is important. This part, this P class command, this thing comes from server. In Next.js case, what we usually do is once the API call has been made, for example, if I refresh this again, 
once this API call has been made, I have the data, I have to use React.js to render this, right? To render the component and everything. So in this case, I'm using JSON for getting the data, but React 18, once it's ready, it's not gonna use JSON to ship this, right? It's gonna use some sort of HTML variant. And once it's ready, like we discussed in the previous video, watch it if you haven't. Once it's ready, React is just gonna plug it in right into the page for you to, you know, just interact with it. Next.js, on the other hand, has to render the whole page at once. And if the data is not available, it will just take some time. But the best case scenario in Next.js, the best way to work is that you prepare all the static HTML, all the static data, send it down the line, down the wire, and then perform network request, get the JSON payload, and then show the data on the screen. This brings the best of both worlds that you have fast pages, number one. And number two, you know, for dynamic data, which can wait, you can just make a request. React kind of takes that approach, but you know, everything is most likely happening on the same server, right? Your HTML is sent down the line and React then later down the line sends more HTML to your, to your web page. Next.js cannot do that at the moment. It needs to have it's, it needs to either go into a server side rendering mode, which is, you know, on every single request, it's just gonna render that, or it can do what we are doing right now at code down, that you send the static bits first and then, you know, just, just plug it in the dynamic bits later down the line after performing a network request. So this is like one huge difference between React 18 and Next.js at the moment, at least. If Next.js decides to implement the best of this world, that is, you know, Next.js is also processing suspense on their own servers and sending data down the line. That will be something because now if that happens, instead of, you know, just making sure that your component renders this data once the data is ready and the API call has been made, although that, that things are actually, you know, just abstracted away with libraries like React Query or Apollo. But if Next.js does that, we can pretty much just, you know, use the data without thinking at all, right? You can just make a network request and instead of just checking is loaded, is error, anything like that, you can just plug your data right in. Why? Because first of all, if your data is loading, suspense boundary will show an indicator. If the data has been errored, you know, if you have any mechanism set up for retry, that will make play, that will happen. And the best part is all of this processing would be happening on the server, right? So you have a strong, reliable network connection, right? Instead of a client's computer, which might have a flaky ISP, uh, networks might, network requests might drop, your server might be running on AWS, EC2, something like this. So you have a reliable server at your disposal. So this is like one of the huge differences between Next.js and React 18 at the moment. React uh, Next.js conf is around the corner. So I'm pretty excited to see what they are gonna release. Probably nothing related to React 18 or this thing, because this is still in alpha and you know has just been released a couple of days ago. But I'm super excited to see what Versal, oops, not this one. Uh, Next.js, this how, what this is gonna bring us, right? Uh, let's see, Next.js conf. So super excited for June 15. This definitely has got something related with real time collaboration i hope but let's see what's what's uh what's the deal so yeah that's pretty much it for this video if you liked it make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel that is all for this one and i'm gonna see you in the next video really soon